We're really excited to do this event. We're also really excited to say that it is National Voter Registration Day today. So this is just a quick reminder for anybody who is here or who is watching. It's a great time to double check your voter registration, um, get registered if you're not, and remember to vote because it is deeply important and we all appreciate um, you thinking about that as well. So, woo, happy National Voter Registration Day. Did you even know that it would like, I, I knew that it was voter registration day because Facebook told me. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. It's like a double celebration. Um, <laughs> um, so I will just briefly say that my name is Lauren Haar. Um, I used to work at Malaprops for many, many years. Um, I ran the events program for a little hot minute um, and always worked in it. I love doing author events. It is one of my favorite things in the world. Um, I could talk to authors and people about books probably every second of my life, um, much like a character in Amy's book, which we'll be talking about soon. Um, and it's especially uh, wonderful for me tonight because I have known Amy for such a long time. Um, I, when I was working at the store uh, early on, and I started in 2007, we we're just saying Amy moved here in about 2008. We've probably known each other since shortly thereafter. Um, cause what I, you know, she came in here and shopped and she wrote in the cafe and we were all just like, oh, I love her so much. <laughs> um, and so it's very exciting to be here tonight, um, to celebrate the other side of certain, which is her fourth book, which we have <coughs> now, um, made sure is true. Um, <laughs> she's also the author of, um, the lemonade year and the year of thorns and honey. Um, she lives in Asheville and she directs the wild acres writing workshop which is a wonderful, well-loved um, program that takes place in little Switzerland um, here in North Carolina, in Western North Carolina. Like, that's right, right? Yes. Right, okay. Um, <laughs> um, for anybody who would like some more information on Amy, please visit her website. It's amywillabyburley.com. Um, so I wanted to put an ad in there, but that well, would be true. Um, <laughs> so everybody, please join me in welcoming my fabulous friend, Amy Willoughby. Thank, Thank you. Um, so Amy, mm -hmm. how does it feel to be here in Malaprops in person celebrating this book right now? Really, really good. Like you, like um, Lauren said, I, I used to sit right over there um, and write all the time. I referred to it as my office that I was, I was going to the office. And so I'm, when everything closed down with, with pandemic, um, one of the saddest things for me was that Malaprops was closed down and I couldn't come and write. So I've been really happy that, um, you know, as the time has passed, things have opened back up and events are taking place. And so um, Malaprops is always a really special place to me um, to celebrate any book because almost some part of everything that I've written has been written in here. So it, it's really nice to be here. Love it. Um, I also just realized that I wasn't using the mic at all and yes. that that might help, especially for the people online. So Actually, you sound fine. Online. Okay. Sound just fine online. So if okay. folks in the store can hear you without, yeah. we're good. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're just going to roll with it because we can project. We're projectors. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I want to say um, just a little bit about The Other Side of Certain, which is the new book. Um, for those of you who haven't read it, it's um, a historical romance. It's set in Depression era Kentucky. Um, and it really focuses so much on, um, on new opportunities, on taking opportunities, and on second chances for people. It's, it's beautiful um, that way. And um, I'm just curious, Amy, about what inspired you to write about that time in that place or, or how did it come together that you would put yeah, this story um, there? You know, most of the things that I write about are about second chances. Mm -hmm. And um, this book, like just about everything else, it, it has a romance, it mm -hmm. has um, dysfunctional families, uh, it has people um, getting over their past. So that's sort of what I do. You know, I like to write about, um, redemption and forgiveness and, mm -hmm. and, um, and people finding um, a new chance at, at life. How this one actually came about, uh, because this is the first historical that, that I've written. Yeah. Um, 
typically I have written contemporary and I used to say that I like writing contemporary because I didn't have to do all the research. Yeah. <laughs> but now that I've had to do the research, that part is really fun. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and it opens up, you know, even, even more doors to, to the story. But I started working on this because the editor of the lemonade year, um, put this idea to me. Um, they were wanting to do another book and, the, the other things that I had just didn't quite fit with with their um, catalog. You know, as as I've gotten from the writing side to the publishing side, you, you kind of um, you get a little bit more of insight into the various publishing houses and the you know their particular niches and what they like. And so uh, the editor really liked my writing, but the other things I had just weren't really a fit for them. So she put um, this idea out. She said, what if, what if you wrote something historical? And of course, at first I thought, oh my gosh, I have to do some research. <laughs> but it's like, no, an editor is asking me to write a book. The answer to this is yes. 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 <laughs> I will write a historical novel and I will pretend yes. like I am really good at that. Yeah. <laughs> Until you make it. Yeah, sure. so like, she just mean like any historical. So I started coming up with all these ideas, and and then she sent me an article that was about the Pack Horse librarians. Um, and I guess that she had just kind of come across this piece of history. Um, now, when I first started writing this book, I also became aware of some other books that were out and coming out that were also about these ladies. But there's really not that much. Uh, yeah. There's, I mean, a handful at yes. best of stories about pack horse librarians. So I began to research them and they were really wonderfully interesting. Mm -hmm. So it came from an editor says, hey, you wanna write a book? You know, yeah. the writer says, sure. Yes. And <laughs> so I started writing it um, and, you know, really just fell in love with that uh, place and, and the time and the spirit of um, the women who were writing, you know, out into the, the hills to deliver books. Um, you know, books, of course, are very important. You know, to me, libraries are very important. When I was a child, I was in the library all the time. Um, and so I also had not known about the Pack Horse librarians and just began to fictionalize, you know, a character and, and began to roll with it. And yeah, yeah and then there it is. Yeah. And are they, I find, at least in the things that I have read about them and about the books that are about them um, and in your book, um, they're usually associated with Kentucky. Is that, <laughs> is that sort of like the main place where they were working? Yeah, I think that is, is where um, it started and, and was in that area with the um, Works Progress Administration. They were um, trying to come up with, you know, jobs and, and that would give people, you know, work and therefore hope and um, going out into um, impoverished areas, especially, I think this was really kind of a pet project for Eleanor Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. um, there were there were several um, articles that I read um, and, and pictures of her there in the in the small libraries. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think it was right in that uh, in that area, um, and uh, only for a brief number of years, really. I think into the mid forties. Yeah. They kept doing it. Yeah. Wow. So cool. It is, it's a very romantic notion, yeah. this idea of like delivering books by yeah. horseback to people who yeah. are in need. Um, yeah, and, and I had read um, interviews with some of the ladies who were still living, talking about, um, you know, how excited the children were, you know, when they would show up, uh, the, you know, kids would run out and just would be happy to get whatever book, you know, that, that they had. And they, um, they had, you know, fiction, and, but they also had all sorts of nonfiction books. They had, uh, one of the things that was the most interesting to me that they did was to make their own scrapbooks. Yeah. They, they were given a lot of materials from other libraries and, um, and they would pick up stories from um, the, the people's houses that they went to. And they would find that they would have, say, a collection of recipes or a collection of you know, how to, how to deal with this or that ailment. And so the librarians would put together the scrapbooks of the like information that they felt like their patrons could use, um, especially, you know, being isolated, a lot of them, mm -hmm. um, you know, up and down the creek and in the hills. And so it really became not just a, I'm dropping off books, but I really know 
each of the houses that I go to and I know the kids and I know the, the struggles that they're having and you know, I know what their parents are going through. And so it was, it was a way that the people got help and information and, and community and, yeah. and in areas where things were very impoverished and isolated. That's so cool. And it plays a huge, that, that idea plays a huge part um, in this book, which I don't want to talk too much about because yes. I don't want to give things away. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it is very cool. It is a very cool thing. Um, so when you, I, I mean, we're talking about, you did a lot of research. Um, like, did you, did you do anything to kind of put yourself in the time, in the place and put your characters there? Like, I'm just wondering if you were like listening to certain music mm -hmm. or if you would like, you know, read something and then that would help put you in there. Or was it very easy once you did the research to just um, kind of set in? It, it was easy once I had a, a picture of the place and in mind. Um, I'm not much of a, a listen to music when, when I write kind of person, um, but I would uh, read uh, things or what I would try to look for, especially, and I just found something that figures into book two was newspaper articles. If I could come across a newspaper article online somewhere that was the actual newspaper from a certain time, that really got me into, um, in, into the mood of the, 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 the folks. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> um, and so we know that, well, I know, I don't know if you all know, but I know <laughs> that certain Kentucky, which is the setting um, for the book, is not an actual town, but one one of the features of this town is a real place. Yes. Yeah, yeah the, the creek itself, uh, there is a creek, the hell for certain creek, which I thought was just the most fabulous name. Yeah. And how could there not already be a book written about that creek. Mm -hmm. um, the a couple of the other books that exist are um, also mentioned real creeks. There's one called Cut Shin um, Creek, um, uh, but nobody had done the hell for certain. And so <clears throat> when I was looking at the location, and I knew that the librarians kind of worked in that particular area, Kentucky just has the best names for <laughs> it's their <That's> cities. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's just so interesting. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, Helper Certain Creek is a real creek. There is a sort of, I don't know that they that it's an official town. It's one of those incorporated, whatever mm -hmm. it is that they call it, but they call it Helper Certain. Yeah. Um, it's, I think the closest city, if, if I'm not mistaken, is um, is Dry Hill mm -hmm. or, or maybe Hyden. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I did a little research about those two towns as well. Yeah. And a lot of them are small. There's not, there's not a, a whole lot to be found. Right. Um, but I, I did as much research as I could about, you know, the area and, um, and that probably the, the creek itself, just knowing that it is, you know, a real yeah. creek. There's a story, uh, there's various stories that I read and, and somebody mentions it in, in this book about how it became, how it got that name. Yeah. And um, it goes back to, and this probably is not even true. I don't know, but um, to like a, an explorer of some sort who had been to uh, the Cut Shin Creek and cut his shin. And then the next day <laughs> in the folklore of the story, he goes you know, to the next creek and it has flooded. And he just says, this place is hell for certain. Yeah. And, and that's supposedly how it got yeah. its name. I mean, that seems legitimate. I think I might say the same yeah. thing if I were in, in yeah. that situation. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, so I, I know that you've been a teacher for a really long time. So Maddie Mobley, who is um, one of the two main characters of the story, um, is a, she's a, an aspiring teacher. She has not become a teacher yet, but she was just fired up about it. She's so passionate. And I know that you are really passionate about teaching. Um, and so I'm just wondering how, how teaching has affected your writing, you know, in general, but also how it played into this particular character. Yeah, you know, when, when I first started writing the character, I, I knew that she was um, supposed to be a pack horse librarian, mm -hmm. but I also knew that she was gonna be coming in um, from out of town. I wanted her to be the outsider, fish out of water um, mm -hmm. sort of character. And generally with the pack horse librarians, there were some rules about um, you know who could get the job. Um, I think um, they had to be unmarried. Uh, they generally were um, local people, mm -hmm. uh, but that, that was the, the point of it was to, to, to make jobs for, for local folks. 
Um, but uh, the more I wrote her, when I first started writing her, she was a librarian in, um, in Asheville and she was working at uh, what would have been the, the PAC uh, library yeah. um, in, in, in my mind and best I could find when that library was incorporated. Um, but the more I wrote her, the, the more she just became a teacher. And probably because that's you know one of the ways that I identify myself, and I wanted her to have um, a, a passion that was you know beyond that too. Yeah. It's like I, I wanted her almost to think of uh, the librarian job as sort of an accidental. I'll do this because you know I can have this teaching job, but then she falls in love with um, you know literally with one of her patrons, but with, mm -hmm. with the, with the notion and, and the, mm -hmm. and the job itself. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. She does a lot of falling in love. In yes. That story. Yeah. With place, a lot of people, people and place. Yes. 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 All yeah. of that. Um, which is lovely to behold and be part of. Um, and that sort of leads me into the next question that I had for you too, which is um, you give your character so much humanity and so much forgiveness like you can see i can feel that coming out like through the through the writing through the story you know um how much you want them to forgive each other and to forgive themselves um and i i know too that you are very positive and very like um loving and caring and thoughtful person um so i'm, I'm just curious about how you keep up that ability both in your writing and sort of for yourself um, when times are dark um, and difficult. And, and uh, I, have a, I have a wager about how you're gonna answer this because the, the two characters, <laughs> um, the, two char the two main characters sort of, uh, you know, one of them is very, is very dark and has had a very difficult time. And, and one of them is very positive and passionate and excited. Um, so, yeah, I, I think in, in the <laughs> writing, like I said, I, I do tend to gravitate towards um, those themes of, um, you know, the, the darkness that we have in, in our, our past and the things that, um, you know, are true or even the things that we that we think are true, you know, about ourselves. And a lot of times we, we tend to spiral those things into um, worse than they are or to assume that other people see us as you know the, the worst version of ourselves and so um i know for for me personally um that i, I think i'm sort of always taking a, a journey of kind of watching what i think about other people um and what i hope that other people think about me and just trying to offer uh, my husband is sitting right there oh, yeah. so <laughs> a lot of times I, i'll find that you know if uh with the ones that you're closest with and that you love the most i think you're the hardest yeah. on them in your mind sometimes so sometimes um maybe even unbeknownst to him he'll do something that um I, he's like oh no <laughs> but i'll find myself you know kind of like you know yeah. and I'm like wait a minute now all right, you, you do way worse stuff. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's that kind of constant forgiveness of somebody else for small things and then kind of cutting ourselves slack for the small things, the bigger thing, the bigger thing. And um, for me, um, personally, where, where I go to, and I know I have some threads of this in the book, is um, my relationship with God. Yeah. Um, is just if if I can be forgiven for this 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 and the next thing, then why in the world could I not forgive yeah. someone else? So the characters in the book, um, I think you can read the book and see those threads, or you can read it and not see them. And mm -hmm. um, you know either way, but I think part of their journey too is if this person can forgive me this, then can I forgive myself that? Right. Um, and why would I hold on to it? if the other person has already let it go right uh, it's beautiful yeah i uh there's there's a, so many layers of like faith and forgiveness that are going on in the book that aren't you know um some of them are are you know definitively like 
Christian because there's the, the library is set in the church that has been destroyed and it's not being used, um, which is like, it has this kind of beautiful, um, um, you know, coming together um, of, these, of these ideas. Um, and then, you know, just in people, yeah. And in, in the place and in the, in the hope of new life and because it's the depression too, mm -hmm. you know, um, a lot of people are, are trying to find a spark, you know, trying to find yeah. a piece of, of something to have faith in something, you know, some way to forgive what is going on and move forward. Yeah. I so. think, um, to me too, it comes back to just the notion of, of hope mm -hmm. that I think that, you know, the characters are certainly looking for hope, especially in, uh, you know, the literal times of the depression. But I think that's what everybody, you know, wants is to, to feel like there's, there's hope, you know, what, whatever, a uh, terrible thing that is happening, whatever thing I did, whatever thing is going on that I don't have any control over, yeah. that, um, you know, that there's still hope to mm -hmm. be had. So I, I do enjoy writing, um, you know, about that. I'm not generally, uh, you know, setting out to do, you know, uh, the happily ever after, um, right. and, you know, if they're in the depression, yeah. how, you know, yeah, it's, right. it's only going to be so <laughs> happily ever after. There's going to be some struggling. But, yeah. <laughs> but I want, I want generally to end, um, you know, with, uh, you know, hope of a, of a new beginning. Yeah. Yeah. I, and it's so nice because of, you know, there are multiple reasons that the times that we are in can cause us to feel hopeless, I think. And so to read something like this and to, to see, to see it, to see people being, good and kind to each other uh, and to, to, um, to themselves when they can um, and, and learn, you know, learn to be more accepting, learn to be more hopeful um, is really so nice. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about this, the outsiderism, because I, I find that really interesting because so the, the, the character of Maddie is obviously an outsider. She's come from Asheville. She's new to town. Nobody, nobody knows her, but they're, they begin to accept her pretty quickly um, because, you know, she's the nice lady on the horse books. So um, who wouldn't accept you? Um, but then Daniel is the, is the other main character and he's grown up in certain and his family has been there for generations. And he is also very much an outsider. Um, even though he's known these people for a really long time. And, and this, the, the sort of parallel journey that they have um, and the ways in which they are both similar and very different, um, I, I thought just brought a lot of great tension to the book and to the story. And so I wondered if that was something, like, did you do that on purpose? Like, I want kind of two outsiders to be um, entering. It, it's interesting, that idea of what, what you do on purpose. Yeah, right. <laughs> as, as so much like the editor question, yeah, 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 yeah I did I that. Did, yes, I did that. The answer is always yes. <laughs> of course, I. Did. <laughs> I think, um, for me, generally, um, when I write, I, 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 I'm not a um, uh, over plotter. Um, yeah. I tend to. Um, I like the discovery mm -hmm. of, of just finding out what happens. I, I have uh, since I've had books published. Kind of become a hybrid of you kind of have to do some because they want things to happen like really quickly yeah so um so i i did some some plotting of what i you know who i thought the people were and, and what i thought that um their uh their characters were like and then as i wrote through that um first draft and got to know them better myself um then uh i think i knew that daniel had been uh, sort of shunned from the community, but I didn't really know why. Um, and of course, Maddie, had, she, he's sort of the figurative outsider. I mean, he, he is literally living on the, you know, the other side of, you know, the, creek, the other side of the creek. Um, and she is, uh, you know, literal outsider coming in from outside. Um, but I don't know that I that I set it up to be that way. Yeah. It's just that that's how they um, how those characters uh, turned out to be. Yeah. And but because of that, um, they're able to understand each other. Um, they've got some similar um, loss and grief mm -hmm. in in their their backgrounds. They hold themselves accountable for things that were not really their fault. Mm -hmm. um, which I guess doesn't have too much to do with outsiderness, but just they kind of become their own little unit mm -hmm. um, as they're getting to know each other and um, and sharing their story 
and you know she sort of draws him back you know mm -hmm. um, to the other <laughs> side of, <laughs> yeah. of the creek um but i i like that about them that they have um mm -hmm. that they have that in common yeah they kind of make each other insiders in yeah. a way like he yeah. he brings the the, the long-standing yeah um, geographical placement um yeah. and and she brings the like being yeah. wanting to be part of the community really um it's so cool um great uh so next question what or who was the hardest part of this book to write oh hmm what or who well the i would have thought that the what would be doing the research but that um that came pretty easily um i think uh, the what in, in terms of the story might have been uncovering uh, what it was that uh, that Daniel was hiding or had done and, mm -hmm. and why that affected the whole town so much. Um, I wanted it uh, to be, um, as all writers do, want, want the story to be plausible, right. um, but, uh, you know, also, you know, um, interesting to, to read. So I think... Mm -hmm. um, the, the plotting of it, just making sure that things were um, kind of delivered a little at a time. I was just gonna say, you do a great <laughs> job of that. It's kind of like peeks out and you're like, is that it? Or is there, is more? there more? Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> because Maddie, I, I, I think the reader is sort of on the same journey as Maddie. Yeah. Um, that they don't know the town either. Mm -hmm. And so they're learning the backstory and all of the, you know, the, the town hurts and, and all of that as she's learning it. Um, but um, she has a way, I think, um, hopefully for the reader to, to, to have them see it through her eyes, as opposed to maybe, um, you know, somebody else in the town that would also um, kind of, uh, be on the side of yeah, Daniel should stay. He, this right. thing that he did was was really it's terrible, much, yeah. and um, and I think because she's able to to see, you know, you're you're not the thing that 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 you did, um, and the thing that happened is it is a little bit his fault, mm -hmm. um, but also not really. Yeah. Um, it's that, and I think that's how things happen in life. It's like you you find yourself in circumstances, you make this choice, that choice makes something not so great happen. You try to fix it by doing this, and that makes something else not so great happen. Yeah. And um, so then it's really easy to say that terrible thing was my fault. Right. Um, when a lot of it is circumstances, yeah. but it's easy to, to blame the whole thing on yourself. And she has an incident in her past that is somewhat similar in that yeah. she, um, you know, surrounding her mother and that, that she blames herself for as well. Yeah. But in her convincing Daniel of, you know, Hey, these things are not something that you should now hate yourself for right. forever. And you can never be forgiven. She sort of realizes that about herself too it's like mm -hmm. the, the thing that i did mm -hmm. was a thing that happened. was just a thing that happened it wasn't yeah. um you know I'm, I'm not now a bad person forever and ever and always right because of this this thing right yeah i love it um <laughs> so my next question is um I, and you kind of hit on this a little bit before but what to, like talk a little bit about the publication journey for this book like you said there was an editor who was like mm -hmm. Yes, write the historical fiction, um, and you were like, "Yes, I, can, I can and I will." <laughs> um, and you, I know that you have an agent that you work with, mm -hmm. and that you work with a few different publishers at this point. Mm -hmm. So, how long did it take to go from the first draft of this novel to right now, and and what did that look like? Um, gosh, I want to say it was um, it was a few years. I, I think yeah. most people have sort of lost track of time with the pandemic oh yeah um and we think Ten everything was ago. like last yeah. week <laughs> it was three years ago <laughs> yeah um but i'm i'm pretty sure that i started writing this prior oh i know because i was still teaching at um elevator across the street mm -hmm. and i was talking to my agent on the phone about it and so it was pre <laughs> pre pandemic that i started writing it um probably um maybe 2019 perhaps and um 
got the draft finished and turned it into the editor that had asked for it. And um, because I tend to go off into the backstories and the, you know, the, the darker, sadder things, it wasn't what they were looking for. They were really looking for just historical romance. Yeah. Um, and I know um, in romance, uh, another thing you kind of learn after you're, you're published and, uh, you know, the, the rules for things. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> romance is generally um, almost 100% focused on the relationship of the two characters. Right. Um, and if you go off into other things too much, then it's kind of straying yeah. from what a typical romance reader is hoping to get. Mm -hmm. um, and so when that publishing house passed on it, um, you know, very graciously, I, I wasn't offended by that at all because yeah. I, I, I didn't really do the book that, that they were hoping for. Yeah. Um, and so then my agent said, well, let's, you know, you've already got it. Let's mm -hmm. start shopping it around. Um, and we began doing that and then the whole world shut down Yeah, and, um, you know, editors weren't really acquiring things for a while. Every, everything just stalled. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, you know, it was just sort of floating and then things started to open back up a bit. Folks were taking things. And then, um, I kind of refer to this book as the, the book that I did, I thought was never going to come out. Yeah. Um, because it, it kept missing, like she would send it to one house and was like, you know what we just did, um, a collection of historical Southern fiction. This would have been great, but we've already filled the slots. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, story of my life, day late, uh -huh. dollar short. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then, you know, things like that kept happening. Um, and we were sending it out and sending it out. And, and meanwhile, I had other things, you know, that, that I wanted to, to work on. And I was like, you know what? We, we were talking and, she, and I was like, let, let's just let it go. Yeah. I, I hate to, to say that, but you've, you've shopped it. We've, we've edited it. We've done this and that, and the next thing, and maybe we just need to move on. Yeah. And then about a week later, she heard back from, um, an editor whose desk it was still sitting on. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting that the things that are happening behind the scenes yeah. that you, you as writer just have to go on and, right. and, and do whatever yeah. it is that you do. Right. Meanwhile, on a desk in a publishing house in Arizona, yeah. um, they, they were going through the book, deciding, okay, um, we really like this piece of fiction. We've never heard of it. And they, they were, this um, uh, Fireship Press um, is specializes in historical and nautical fiction. Mm -hmm. So it's really their, their thing. Yeah. So that was, I was really happy to be picked up by a house and, you know, it's a small one, yeah. but one that that's what they do. Right. Um, so to hit on a piece of history that they found interesting yeah. um, was very flattering and that they, you know, liked the book. And so unbeknownst to us, they were, yeah. uh, you know, in their committees talking about, you know, okay, what, what would be the market? We've never heard of this. It's way out in the South is no one's going to read this except for librarians yeah. and, <laughs> and teachers. And we really want to publish it, but, um, we don't know if, yeah. if, you know, somebody that's not a librarian will want to read it. So they had written, um, back to my agent this, and, and she said, you know, no, there's a, there's a whole Appalachian, um, fiction culture. Um, it's, mm -hmm. it, it has, you know, space within, within that. Um, and so I guess, you know, she convinced them yeah. <laughs> to, uh, to, to give it a whirl, but, and, and so, yeah, about a, about a week after I had said, you know, let's just never mind because that conversation had gone on prior with yeah. them. Um, they, they, um, emailed her back and said, you know, we, we really love it. It's a unique piece of, of history. Um, and, and then, you know, the, some glowing things about the writing that all writers like to hear. Yeah. And we really, if it's still available we really want to publish it. And so it's like, oh yes. It's, yes. Again, the answer is yes. It's still yes. <laughs> Here's the address to which you can yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> I love it. Um, and so now what are you working on? What's next? Well, right now I'm working on the next book in yeah. this series. Um, when my agent pitched this, this book, um, she, she likes to, to have me write up these synopsises for other books that I haven't written, which to me is like mind boggling. Yeah. Um, because, you know, the writing of synopsis is really hard. 
even if you've already written the book. So uh, there was, I, you know, she's like, oh, do you, do you see these characters going on? I'm like, yeah, I guess I could see them yeah. going on. She's like, okay, great. Write me a synopsis for what would be book two. I'm like, <laughs> and, and, and then she's like, and go ahead and do a book three. Yeah. And, and so I wrote these, you know, premise style synopsis scenes yeah. for um, a book two and a book three. So she would pitch it as a series. Um, but the contract that I got was just for the one book. Mm -hmm. um, but when they sent me the, um, the proof of the cover, it said on there, book one. I was like, mm -hmm. huh, <laughs> okay. Well, they might be interested in a yeah. book two. Um, and so I began to plot a book two and, and then never started and never started. And, and finally recently ha have started and, and gotten going on it. Um, and I just heard from them last night uh, in an email, just, you know, congratulations on the book coming out on and on. Um, we're excited to see what happens in book two. <laughs> and so now I'm thinking, oh goodness. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a part. So that's what I'm working on. That's great. It's book two. Is and it? it follows um there there's a um there are a few other librarians uh in the book. Um and one of them is named Ruby. Uh she becomes friends with Maddie. I love Ruby. Yeah. <laughs> and so the second book um follows her, but uh, all of the same folks that you know mm -hmm. are are in the book. Um Maddie and Daniel are still there. And, and Ava, and she'll be book three. Um, and, uh, but with new characters yeah. coming in. Yeah. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah. Is it fun to be back in certain, to be back with the characters? It, it is, yeah. it is, yeah. Um, cool. And because, you know, once, once I wrote these crazy spontaneous synopsises, I, synopsi, whatever yes. they are, <laughs> um, I was like, the, the book, even though it wasn't written, was already taking shape. Yeah. And so, um, and I thought, gosh, if, if I don't ever get to write that, you know, I, I kind of know who it's about and something uh, really interesting that happens. And now I want to find out all the other things. And yes. <laughs> so I am excited that they, you know, they clearly seem interested yeah. in another book. I feel yeah. like it's mine. If they put up book one this on the first one, one, they better be yeah. publishing the book too. Like you put that on the cover. So that's on you. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. excited. So. Yeah. To get to write another one yeah oh that's so cool yeah. i love it i can't wait to i love ruby you guys she's a great <laughs> um okay i want to leave some time for questions i could ask amy questions all night and sit up and chit chat um anybody here yes i have a question about what happened where did you write during COVID? well nowhere <laughs> <laughs> covid um I really, and I've, I've talked to a lot of other writers that kind of have this same, uh, they're sort of like this dual. Some writers are like, I got the most writing done that I have ever done in my life. If that, like that's like people who's my husband. training for a yeah. marathon and you're like, <laughs> yeah, like I <laughs> ate chips on the couch. Yeah. My, yeah, husband, just, my husband's just at home writing yeah. books and books and books and books. Yeah. And I'm just like, mm, Marie, <laughs> <laughs> it's just nothing. Um, and so luckily for me, what, what I was doing was editing and sort of, like, especially with this book. So I was kind of staying in the world, but I was like grasping on from the, I, the COVID, the, the height of it in yeah. 2020 was really rough. I, I remember it was October of 2020. I was going on a walk with my daughters and, um, we went past this house. that's pretty close to ours that, um, it really looks like nobody lives there, but um, there's a bunch of Amazon packages on the front porch all the time. And somebody comes by to mow the grass. Um, and so I kind of like noticed this house, but we're walking and then all of a sudden, this whole story of this agoraphobic woman who lives in this house and her husband, and this is another book I'll write eventually, when I started taking notes, uh, her husband was a travel writer. And they were getting ready to go on this, you know, great adventure. You know, he was going to get to write about all these places. They had all their bags packed. As they were going to walk out the door, she couldn't do it. She couldn't go. But it was like all of this stuff just came to me all at once. Yeah. And I hadn't thought of anything creative until that day in October. Um, and I, I held on to that for a while, wrote, wrote some notes on it. I know who some of these folks are and some other characters that figure in. Um, but then in 2021, my mom got sick 
and passed away. And so that completely <laughs> derailed again. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm kind of just realizing today, you know, when I was thinking about that journey, I was like, it is almost the end of 2022. Yeah. And I feel like I'm really just getting that, that writing mojo back. Yeah. So, um, nowhere, <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, Matt, now it's, it's coming back, but I do generally have to, to leave the house, which is why I was always sitting here at, at Malaprop. So yes. <laughs> I've got um, a house full of kids and pets and, and a bunch of things going on. And um, sometimes um, folks would see me writing in here and would ask, how are you getting anything done? In here? Because the store would be full yeah. and just conversation and people everywhere. I was like, none of these people in here want me to make them lunch. <laughs> <laughs> So therefore, yeah, good. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, Stephanie, do we have some online questions? So, um, I wonder if you might be able to tell us, um, we know that you weren't writing during the pandemic, which is also understandable. I know that people also had similarly disparate experiences with reading mm -hmm. the past couple of years. Like, I know my attention span really suffered. So have, have you been reading? And if so, do you have any, any kind of books that you would like to share with people in addition to your own? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, I didn't read a whole lot during the pandemic either. And re reading, um, is, uh, when I teach, I'm teaching writing. So I'm reading a lot of, when I say I wasn't reading, I was reading a lot of uh, middle school manuscripts. Um, <laughs> Some from her kids over there. Yeah. Um, so I was reading a lot, but I wasn't reading much of anything for um, pleasure or for that sort of uh, the kind of reading that a writer really needs to do um, to stimulate their, their own creativity. Um, and I had to um, make the decision. I am going to sit down and read. And so I made myself a little reading nook at, at home. And um, I... I had to get in. It's like going to the gym. You have to get into to the habit. I need to get in that habit too. Um, <laughs> Tell me how you do it. I've been waiting on that. Yeah, I'm sitting down and reading um, because also I equated reading with um, relaxing and taking a break. And I am not a good relaxer. Um, so I really um, and I think some of this was after the pandemic, after my mom passed. I was like, you know what? I need to take a break. Um, it is okay to sit down and um, drink a cup of coffee. It's okay to sit down and read this book. Um, so, um, and now I, I'm happy to sit down and, and read a book. Um, I uh, just got Sarah Addison Allen's Other Birds. Fantastic. I'm reading it really slowly because I don't want it to end. I want to live in this world that she's created. And that I was so excited when I heard that she had a new book coming out because it's been a little while um, for her. And so, and it, does not disappoint. It's it's fantastic. Um, I was also given an ARC for Celeste Ng's new book, um, Our Missing Hearts, which I think comes out next month. Um, that is fantastic. Um, when I got especially to the end of that book, you know, it's one of those books that 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 you just like hug onto for a moment because you know it's like I I just have to somehow put this into my my chest. Yeah. Um. Uh. That that was. So, so good. Um, and then um, one of the other things I made myself do was join a book club. And, and um, for you. I know, <laughs> because that too was like, I, I can go once a month and sit with some friends and talk about a book. Mm -hmm. And some of them might be watching online. Um, and so we've read a lot of great stuff there too. One of the ones that we read um, not too long ago, and I don't know that this is um, new or, or not, but it's um, the, the Scent Keeper's Daughter. And I cannot remember who wrote it. Um, the scent keeper, like smell. Scent. Yeah. That had such an interesting premise of, um, of this man who had invented a machine that could trap scent smells and uh, would bring back the, the memory of, of whatever it was. Um, and, you know, he and his daughter are living on this island all by themselves and just really atmospheric and um, uh, unique. And uh, the characters that come into play and the, the things that happen, that, that one I, I really 
enjoyed as well. I'm really kind of a love the one you're reading. Kind of <laughs> love the one. just like backtrack. <laughs> yeah, like a few books that that I've read lately. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. The, the Scent Keeper by Erica Bauermeister. I yes, I think so. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Um. So yes, the um the Scent Keeper by Erica Baumeister. Baumeister is um is the one. Thank you, Bert. Great. Um, that's awesome. Any other questions from the crowd? Anybody? Um, I just had something I was going to ask you, and I and then it left my head. Um, so where are you writing these days? Um, well, my um, because I have I have to leave the house. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, I have got to carve out some, some actual time, especially now that it says book one on there and I'm supposed to be finishing book two. <laughs> um, and because time just slips away, like I'll get to it, I'll get to it, I'll find some time, I'll come up with some uh, sticker chart that I'll put on the bedroom door. And if you let mommy work for five minutes without knocking on the yeah. door, <laughs> it would be a I was like, no, I, I'm going to have to to leave the house, but I don't, I don't, uh, where is the time to do it? Yeah. And then um, I have two sons. Um, my younger children are sons uh, who are nine and 11. And the 11 year old had been wanting to do a coding class. And so I found this place called Zaniac um, over in um, Biltmore. Is it Biltmore Square? What is it? Biltmore Park. Square Biltmore Park. Yeah. Yes. And um, the, the class is about an hour and a half, but uh, they, they have this, you, you can just drop them off early. She's like, oh, you can drop them off as of about three o'clock. And their class starts at four and it's over at 5.30. I was like, ooh. Can give them a snack and they can just play on the computer. I was like, this place is a godsend. And it is literally a block away from Barnes & Noble that's over there. So I dropped them off at their class early. Yeah. Um, and they get their snack and they do their coding. My younger son, um, at first he was not all that interested in it. But then I was like, no, I th let's sign you up too, because yeah, I think you'll really like it. Yeah. And, and he does. And so I've been going over there um, and, and writing and, um, and, and, and really making myself go over there and write. Yeah. Right. This is not the time for me to drop them off at class and go to the grocery store, yeah. which is kind of what I'm generally tempted to do. If I have a moment, I'll, I'll run an errand or I'll uh -huh. do this or I'll do that. I was like, no, I am going to write during that time. Yeah. Um, so I have those little chunks on Monday and, and I'm hoping that it will spark, you know, another chunk of time yeah. that I can find you know, somewhere else. Absolutely. And my husband is um, awesome about, um, you know, letting, letting me, you know, go and write or, or if I seem like frazzled at all, he's like, why don't you just go somewhere <laughs> and, and write. But um, that really, <laughs> really helps to have somebody that's, you know, supportive of it and isn't like, oh, you've got some free time. Why don't yeah. you go to the grocery store? But yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It gets us all dang grocery yeah. store. <laughs> um, I love it. Um, anybody else thought of any questions that they want to ask? Okay. Well, how much time do we have? Should I keep should I keep asking any questions? I mean you can if yeah. you can <laughs> or you can go to both signing, whatever you want to I love it. I love it. Is there anything else that I have not asked you that you would like to be asked or that you would like to talk about regarding yes. the book or you know, anything else? Well, you had some good questions. <laughs> that, was, that was lots of good stuff. I like to get in there. I like to meet. I'm like, let's yeah. let's talk about it. How does it happen? Um, do you do you feel like you base your characters on people that you know, or compilations of people, or do they just kind of spring? I I think they generally just sort of spring out, and then um, I I can there there's some characters that I can look back at now, and I see little things that I sort of um, unintentionally um, wrote them to have a, a quality of, of someone. Yeah. But, um, I don't think I set out yeah. to do it. Um, they just sort of, um, my mom, um, there was, cause I, I said something in a, um, uh, acknowledgement of another book or something about characters, um, you know, talking to me in my head or something. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then she heard some other 
author say something, you know, very similar, you know, mm -hmm. just the character starts talking to them. And, yeah. and she called me up and she's like, I heard this other author talking about characters talking in their head. And that makes me feel so good that you <laughs> are not actually are crazy. Not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they just, yeah. you know, I just kind of start hearing them. When the first draft of this book was actually all from Maddie's point of view. Yeah. Um, but then the more that I knew Daniel and his story, um, the more he started talking yeah. and, um, and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him in here. Yeah. Too. yeah. And now I can't imagine it not told that way. Yeah. And it's, and it's very cool. Cause a lot of times when you get the two character perspective, there's like jumps in, in time. And sometimes there are in this book, but a lot of times it's like mm -hmm. the, the moment shifts mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. one person to the other, which I found like very cool to like suddenly be seeing sort of the same events from the other person. I, I enjoyed writing yeah. that too because in, in some of the chapters I realized that um, you know their perception of what was happening mm -hmm. or the importance of it um, was not the same yeah and it's really interesting to me the different ways that people uh, perceive the exact same thing that's mm -hmm. happening and so I really like to write multiple point of view stories. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in the case of this one, I, I really um, enjoy like those moments where the, the people are misunderstanding each other. And like, mm -hmm. as reader, you see this person is, thinks that this is happening. The, this person thinks something else is happening. Yeah. Um, and then to have like, it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, I, I, I love that. Um, uh, trying to explore those things the way yeah. that um and that probably figures way back into the whole uh you know um forgiveness thing it's like mm -hmm. that the way that um you know we don't see the same thing the same way and um and often turn that into some big you know huge misunderstanding and, it, and it's really not yeah um but yeah I, I i enjoy doing that and and sometimes it would be just like in in the the moment yeah. i i tend to to visualize things yeah. as if they're a movie yeah and so in my head when i'm writing it that's like when the camera like shifts yes. to, yeah you know focus on the other person's face and then we begin to get the story yeah um, i love it especially if there's one scene where um where maddie starts dancing um in in the yard and she's like singing the song from a Hollywood film and it's um I don't know it's just one of the loveliest little <laughs> moments in the, in the book like it's and the, and you kind of get to see it from both yeah. if I'm remembering right in my mind yeah. I can see it so, from, yeah. sort of from both characters and you really get you know you get a feeling for how they feel about each other in that in that part too um yeah I had a um uh, at, at at Wild Acres Joe Mills was teaching um, a poet, and he made a comment about how there's a dance scene in in every movie, or like or like ninety. It was like a ridiculous amount of you know percentage of yeah. things that had a dance scene in them, or a book or a movie. And it was like, no, no, that's not true. And then I was thinking, I was like, oh wait, I have one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and yeah. then you know, you start thinking about these movies that you think or stories that don't have a dance scene. You're like, I don't know, wait, they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's an amazing way for to let somebody become like very human all yeah. at once. Like it's a really like I don't know, it's really humanizing sort yeah. of thing. Like, yeah, I think in the book it's one of the moments where that but they both let their guard down. Yeah. Um, she's you know, trying to, um, you know, uh, you know, um, present very professionally and um, but then something uh, reminds her of, of a movie and she starts singing it and she's dancing and and, you know, she's coming from a world where she goes to the movies. And I mean, even during the Depression, they were really not that bad off in comparison to some other yeah. folks. And, you know, there were still things coming out. There were still books. There were still movies. Um, and so she's kind of in that world. and. Um, kind of does something that she then feels very silly for having done. Yeah. You know, that she's, you know, out in the, you know, this guy's front yard singing and dancing <laughs> uh, to a movie. And, you know, so far as she knows, they don't even know what Hollywood is. Right. You know, mm -hmm. He does. But, yeah. <laughs> but, and it also lets him, because um, he's got this very, you know, rough because everybody hates him. Yeah. And so why would this person also not, not hate him? But she yeah. does something just very her and very, you know, just 
personal and she, you know, pulls him in to, to dance with her. And it's a moment where he just gets to be a regular person, somebody that somebody else would actually say, Hey, come out here. And, and, dance. you know, he was not the yeah. town pariah in that moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's nicknamed the Grizzly, if that gives you, I mean, that's what people call him. At first, she's like, is it a bear? Is it a person? I don't know. But she finds out pretty soon. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm giving anything. Um, all right. Well, I think that was amazing. And thank, thank you. you so much for answering all my questions. And thank you all for being yeah, here. Thank you. Um, online and in person. Let's buy Amy's book. From Malaprops, <laughs> they've got copies, and then get her backlist too if you don't already have it. Okay, yes. thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a great night. Thank you.